From the pages of my website, MikeHuckabee.com, I bring you a crazy observation. Professor Glenn Reynolds of Instapundit likes to say that all the Democrats had to do to regain power was not to act crazy, and they can't even do that. That may be the understatement of the year. Democrats regained the majority in the House last week on promises to lower health care costs, rebuild infrastructure, and return civility to politics. But in just their first four days, they managed to set a new land speed record for careening from reasonable impersonation of a rational human being to full-on bat poop loonies. <laughs> now, by this time next Thursday, I half expect them to be climbing to the top of the Capitol Dome while screaming gibberish and waving flaming torches. Here's just a little recap of their version of MAGA, Make America Groan Again. I said, make America groan again. <laughs> now, within the first couple of hours, Democrats filed articles of impeachment against the president with no grounds. They moved to abolish the Electoral College, and they put out notices that they would be hiring lots and lots of lawyers for investigations of President Trump, as well as his businesses, family members, friends, acquaintances, chambermaids, dogs, cats, and chia pets. <laughs> then Representative Rashida Tlaib stood in front of a crowd and said she was quoting what she told her young son when she declared that they were going to impeach the bleeping bleep, using possibly the most vile profanity our language offers. Nancy Pelosi refused to criticize her. Now, I'm so old, I can remember when Nancy Pelosi said that if only the Democrats won, would civility return to politics. But that was a few forgotten months ago, so... <laughs> Speaker Pelosi seems to be having her own mental short circuit, having declared that walls are immoral and claiming that the Constitution makes her the equal of the president, since the executive and legislative are equal branches. Well, yeah, except that Trump is the sole leader of the executive branch and the nation in general, being the only official elected by the entire country and having garnered nearly 63 million votes nationwide. But you'd think that she'd at least know the difference between a president and a representative having lived through 20 presidential elections. <laughs> Add that up. Of course, any discussion of wackadoodle Democratic antics is not complete without Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She hadn't held her first job in politics for more than 48 hours before calling for a radical Green New Deal as well as some other massive programs that would vastly bloat the government, crush individual freedom, blow tens of trillions of dollars, and remake America into a socialist utopia. She still tends to bristle when anyone brings up the fact and math-challenged aspects of her statements, but I'm happy to report that at least she's now moved beyond saying that, well, we'll just pay for it. And now she's being honest enough to admit that she wants to raise what she called the tippy-top income tax rate to 70%. That's right, 70%. But smart liberals know that's not going to get her social utopia paid for. New York Times columnist Paul Krugman is calling for a top tax bracket of 80%. But before you could hire an auctioneer, former Obama HUD Secretary Julian Castro called for a 90% top tax rate. I ain't making this up. Folks, God only requires I give 10%. <laughs> Liberals demand that I only get to keep 10%. I'm just glad they're not God, even if they think they are. But hey, why stop at 90%? Back during the 60s and 70s, British rock stars such as the Rolling Stones and Rod Stewart complained that they paid 90% in income taxes, and then when you added in the annual property taxes and other taxes, they were actually being billed for more than 100% of their incomes. And you know what they and other high-earning Brits did? They left the country. No taxes for the UK, period. So in closing, I will note that if the Democrats keep up their current levels of disconnect from their constituents' lives and concerns, as well as from reality in general, they may lose the 33 House from district, or the 33 House districts that Trump won in 2016 that'll be up for grabs again in 2020. By then, Republicans will be itching to replace them with representatives who don't need straitjackets. There you go. <laughs>
Well, let's see what you sent in this week that's got your attention from the wide world of news and events. This is from Penny. She lives in Reno, and she writes, actor Christian Bale won the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical for playing Dick Cheney. He thanked Satan for inspiring his performance. Why does an Englishman weigh in so nastily on a former vice president? Well, I think the answer is simple, Penny, because he's full of Satan, that's why. <laughs> And he made it real clear, and he even confessed it on international television. So thank you, Christian Bale. The next time we need a Britisher to tell us how to live in America, we'll remind you guys who won the Revolutionary War. But that's another matter. <laughs> now, here's a question on the next presidential election from a guy. He calls himself Conservative Carl. He lives in Jackson, Mississippi. And his question is this. He says, with over 50 freshman Democrats taking up office on Capitol Hill, and several having socialist views that tilt further left than many of the Democrats, does this foreshadow a potential White House win for Bernie Sanders in 2020? Carl, I have some good news for you. I think if the Dems continue to go this far left, it will really perhaps signal in a re-election of President Donald Trump in 2020, and Bernie <laughs> might as well become Colonel Sanders and fry up some chicken. Well, I hope you'll send in your questions or thoughts on the news and issues to my two cents at tbn.tv. And thanks for considering my thoughts this week on Facts of the Matter.